Well, welcome everybody to the Life West Leadership Line. I'm Dr. Ron Oberstein, and I have a very special guest who goes way back with me, uh, Dr. Angel Achoa, coming from San Diego, California. Angel, welcome to the Life West Leadership Line. Thank you, Dr. Ron. I appreciate you having me. Yeah, and listen, having, you know, just so our viewers know this, uh, you know, Angel um, uh, was living in San Diego, uh, was doing, uh, he was pretty high up doing business construction management and decided he wanted to be a chiropractor. He was a tennis player, if I'm correct, and in college, correct. in undergraduate college, played at, at U Illinois. Yeah, University of Illinois. Yeah, I'm, I'm, my, it's, some stuff is still there, Angel. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and came in and was referred by another chiropractor, actually. Came into the office and, and, you know, and said that he was gonna be a chiropractor and it was so cool to watch him on his journey going through school and he's just been doing amazing things. He, he, he sits on the board of Life Chiropractic College West. Um, Angel is a uh, 2014 graduate, and um, he practiced in Oakland, California for a year, now in San Diego for the last five years. Got an amazing practice, which hopefully we'll get into today. Uh, and I'm just excited to have you. So thank you for being taking the time. Of course, Ron. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and, and for those of you that don't know about Angel, Angel is a very open person. Um, uh, Angel is Latinx. He was born in Mexico City, I believe. Correct. Yep. And then, and uh, and he um, he's gay, and he's a chiropractor, and he's a husband, and he's uh, you know has dogs and cats, and not cats probably, but all kinds. Of, and he's just got kind of, he's really diverse. And, I, and and Angel, what I'd like to do is just jump in and talk about diverse, you know, diversity, because you know one of the things that we're doing at the college of you know you know this. You know, Doc, is that we're doing a lot of, you know, things around diversity and inclusion. And a lot of this came from you, came from your views on the board about about becoming, exploring diversity and inclusion and diving into it. We dove head first into it. Um, but let's talk about it with our with our, our, our viewers because, you know, a lot of people are totally aware of it, you know. Yeah. Or, or there's different scales of awareness. And even us at Life West, you know, we, we're not there, you know. I like to equate it that we're probably like in fifth grade right now or fourth grade, you know, on the scale, but it's just an evolution. So talk to us about it, like in what you've experienced and, and, you know, about, you know, diversity and inclusion and equity and chiropractic and this and mine. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, kind of my experience of diversity and inclusion and in chiropractic as a student and then going through school was there wasn't a lot of diversity or inclusion. Uh, when I got to Life West, I was thinking a school in the Bay Area was going to be very diverse and have a whole bunch of different clubs associated around that, and there wasn't anything on campus. And fortunately, the school was open to the idea, and we started a club there called Spectrum. Uh, when I was a student, it was basically an LGBT and ally uh, club that basically allowed students to be themselves. Because I found a lot of students that were LGBT or were allies of the LGBT community felt they didn't have a place to go to. They didn't have like-minded individuals to talk to. And one of the huge things I think of going through chiropractic college and then eventually going into practice is developing a community. Yeah. And so one of the things that I was really happy to see at Life West was A, that we were open to having a diversity club. And that's continued. I believe it's called the Equality Council now, um, which I've spoken at a few times, which has been led by amazing students that are LGBT and non-LGBT and people of color, and I've been seeing just this trend at Life West overall of diversity and inclusion becoming more and more part of the, the institution, part of conversations. I've been part of many uncomfortable conversations with people, but that's sometimes what has to happen. You have to have an uncomfortable conversation, and when someone's receptive to that and open-minded, it's amazing. Yeah. So it's been really exciting for me to see the the openness that you have had, Ron, and the changes I'm seeing at the college for diversity and inclusion, I do not see this happening anywhere else right now. Yeah. And the, the changes that are happening, I'm, I'm very happy with and very proud to be part of. And Angel, it's really interesting because I'm, I'm going to go back to like 1988, something around that time period, right? And I was practicing in San Diego at the time. And we, as an office, were, you know, we were doing screenings, things like that. The internet wasn't around yet. Uh, you know, and so that's how we reached people. And we actually were one of the first, we were the first chiropractic group to support the Gay Pride Festival. And, and the, the interesting thing that I want to bring up about that is that when we first started, we were there for 10, 15 years, but when we first started, it was held in a parking lot, probably the size of a strip mall, you know, a small strip mall. With a, and it was, they put fencing around it and they had National Guard 
outside. Now, it was it was crazy. I mean, it was just nuts. And the parade that they had was now that in every city. The parade that they had was like they had police around it and all kinds of stuff. What people might not understand, and, and most people nowadays do, but is that where it came from with diversity and inclusion, right? And this was just around the gay population. This wasn't around anything else. It, it's it, it it's really shifted, you know. I mean, now now the gay pride festival in San Diego was in Balboa Park, and it, and 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 we moved over to the uh, to the Balboa Hospital parking lot, which was just massive. And then and then and then the festivals, and, and so things are just growing so much. But what they don't understand is is some people don't understand, I should say, is what's so important with inclusion. I love everybody, you know, kind of thing, and 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 to really understand what it's like. To have a home or be with people who understand what you're going through. Can you can you speak to that at all? Yeah, yeah. So you know, the whole concept of diversity and inclusion is, you know, a lot of people will say, "Well, I love everybody. Everyone's great." Well, that, that's that's an amazing sentiment. I, I I love hearing that. But the reality is, is people that come from places of diversity have different struggles they face, different challenges that they face, just living life. Um, you know, being a gay chiropractic student, I would have um, some classmates that wouldn't want me to palpate them because I'm gay. And those are very awkward situations where all of a sudden here I am trying to get my education and someone doesn't want me to palpate them. And I would have to have those discussions and I would have to basically say, look, this is inappropriate and I'm here getting my education. And eventually you may have a gay patient come into your office and are you going to tell them that you don't want to touch them because they're gay? Like, those are situations that I had to deal with, and, and, and those are situations that someone that maybe is an LGBT has never dealt with, or someone that, let's say, is transgender, um, or maybe a practitioner has never seen a transgender patient before and doesn't even know how to handle that situation or what pronoun to use. And so diversity and inclusion is also educating oneself. You can say you love everybody, but if you don't truly understand where they're coming from or the challenges they, they have, you can't truly connect with them. Yeah. So I think one of the big things about diversity is, A, having compassion and understanding of what challenges people have faced. And if you don't know what, the, what those are, ask. If anyone were to ask me, hey, what challenges have you faced as a gay man or a Latino, I can give you a laundry list of things. And I'm not stating those for sympathy. I'm stating those for understanding. Because those challenges have actually made me incredibly resilient and has made me have a voice and be able to speak up and say, you know what, this isn't correct, this is wrong it's oftentimes very easy for people to rather than have conflicts, just stay quiet. And that's one of the things that I'm finding now is, is a big challenge for people is a lack of saying anything is worse than saying something sometimes. And so what I'm noticing, I'm appreciating seeing you doing Ron and the college doing is we're having these conversations about diversity. We're having these conversations about inclusion. And what I hope from our peers and then our colleagues is they start asking questions and if they, realize that their practices are not diverse and inclusive, maybe they can look inside a little bit and be like, why is that the case? Because my practice is not only LGBT, I have a ton of African American, I have a ton of people in the addiction communities, I have have every color, race, sexual orientation, political affiliation come into my office and I provide a safe space for all of them. And I understand where they're coming from. You know, one, one may think I'm incredibly liberal leaning, but You'd be surprised if it comes into my practice, and I respect them for who they are, and I respect their views as long as they're respectful to everyone else within the office. Yeah, and that's the that, the, the two pieces that I that I just got from what you said. Number one is it's not about knowing. We don't have to know everything. Like if I if I don't know anything about you know, it's kind of like if, if if a parent just finds out that their child is gay and they have no idea and they no. It's not about, oh my God, how did I miss it? Or, or, or what do I say? Or It's really about opening the conversation, mm-hmm. right? Isn't that really what it's about? It's about learning and just saying, and asking, being open to ask the questions that, that, that people have in their minds, right? What, what, what is pressing right now? Like, I don't understand, how do you do this? Or how does this happen? What happens to you if you go over here? You know, those kind of questions, right? And, and really been able to have that conversation. And that's what I feel, I like to think it probably comes from the 40s and 50s and I don't know, a bit back then, where you know, silence was the golden rule, right? If you don't, don't talk about it, you know? It's like right. a family, there's an old Woody Allen movie with a family sitting around the table, I think with Annie Hall, and someone says, oh, did you hear about Mildred? She has cancer. 
and they whisper cancer. And every time they talk, if someone says cancer, they whisper it because you can't say the word, right? Right. It's the same thing. Being able to be open and, and how do you, I think that what we have to learn is how do we start the conversations? Absolutely. And, you know, one of the things, I mean, even for myself, you know, there's a lot of diversity and there's a lot of challenges going on um, in the United States regarding that. And some of the stuff I don't 100% understand. And so I have some African-American patients that I pull them aside after an adjustment and say, hey, can we talk a little bit? And they're like, yeah, what's up? And I'm like, hey, what's going on? How are you feeling about it? Tell me your story. Like, where did this come from? Like, educate me. What challenges have you faced? What do I need to do to kind of be the best person to provide the safest space possible? And I was shocked how much I didn't know being like diversity champion uh, about it. And they, I probably talked about five patients about it and all of them were like, you know what? Thank you for asking me because since you're not black, a lot of people are scared to even bring it up. But I, I feel like if you ask the questions from a place of love and compassion, people are so open to it. And, and it's been so enlightening for me. It's been so helpful for me to just be able to have those dialogues and have those questions. And I feel like I get a lot of respect from my patients for doing that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think we just kind of, we just kind of reverse that old saying silence is golden. Right. Correct. Cause it's not right. It's, it's like being able to ask and, and sometimes it takes courage. It does. It does. It does. Yeah, I, I've, I found it has to come from a place of sincere, genuine, like being genuine and being completely vulnerable with a person and stating, hey, I'm ignorant on this fact. I don't know what I don't know. Please enlighten me. I want to understand where you're coming from. I want to understand so I can become a better person and I can help you so I can be your ally. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's interesting, too, because if you look at it on a chiropractic level, right, and this is for our listeners who, who, who are working with us right now, on a chiropractic level, wouldn't it be cool if people walked in our offices every day and said, so tell me more, because I really want to understand, you know, what this is. Instead of walking with a preconceived notion, and then we have to, we, we, we a lot of chiropractors might, might think, might work from the standpoint of, they're already over here. I've got to bring them over here, you know, which I know I've done that. But it's like, you know, it'd be just so cool. We just had that conversation, right, about, uh, here, oh, perfect. This is what we do. And this is exactly what it is. They go, oh, great. But they're coming from inquisitiveness and sincerity, not already having a bias, right? And, Correct. And that's the perfect the, analogy. That's, that's the, the patient that doesn't really believe in chiropractic, yet yeah, they're standing there in your office and <laughs> – having to explain it to them. Yes. It's the exact same thing, but it just flipped. Yes. And, and, the, and the crazy thing is this, and this is what I found, as I dove into this, you know, into diversity and inclusion, um, it's the unconscious bias. You know, it it's, it's the stuff that we're not even aware of that's there, right? That was passed down from our parents and our grandparents and their parents and blah, 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 blah or societally, right? You right. know, and it's like, you know, it's that unconscious bias that used to be there with people. When I go, let me go back into like the eighties with AIDS, you know, there was this unconscious bias among straight people that every, every gay person was an AIDS carrier, you know, right. and it basically kind of did this, you know, and, and, and they just would walk around with this, right. You know, not even conscious about it. And then when you right. sit down and talk about it, that's stuff you'd see. Were there other things that you've seen any, any other biases that you've seen? I mean, you bring up the AIDS one, that's an interesting one to discuss. I mean, I've had chiropractors reach out to me saying, hey, I have a patient that's HIV positive, should I see them? Uh, that catches me a little off guard, but it's part of that bias, right? And I say, well, um, I believe your job as a chiropractor is to find a vertebral subluxation and adjust it and clear the person. So regardless of if they are HIV positive or not, it's the exact same protocol. Yeah. And, uh, you know, caught me off guard, but then I understood from a place of compassion that maybe that person or that practitioner didn't know. And so I think that's the other thing that I've, I've had to really dig deep in is to find compassion for people's ignorances, but also share light on them and come from a place of compassion when I talk to them, not from a place of anger or frustration, but just a little bit of like, okay, well, let me just give you a little uh, education piece. Um, you know, I think, you know, I, I have it on multiple, le multiple levels because uh, I'm also Latino and I was born in Mexico City and Spanish is not my first language and I'm an immigrant to this country, but I also am a light-skinned Latino. I don't, I could pass as being white, but I am Mexican. And so I've had to deal with it from my Mexican community, not thinking I'm brown enough, 
and from the white community not thinking I'm brown enough. And it's a spectrum, like everything is a spectrum. And so I think understanding that on different levels is, is important. And ultimately it's just having a, a genuine curiosity about people and cultures and learning about them. And I think that, that at the end makes one the best chiropractor possible because you have patients that are coming into you that are able to be vulnerable and real, but you have to be vulnerable and real with them too. Yeah, and, and, and it also, it's about being the best person, right? Because it's going to make them the best person possible, right? And, Correct. And, and it's amazing when people find out about others that they don't know about, right? Like, oh, my God, I, I didn't know that you were gay, or oh, my God, I didn't know that you were whatever, right? And, yeah. And, and it doesn't change the relationship at that point, you know? It's like, I already know you for who you are. I know who your heart, what your heart is, right? Right. It really uh, it's actually funny. Uh, yesterday in practice, one of my last patients, it was a new patient, and we went to the exam and everything, and somehow in passing, I just mentioned my husband, and he just kind of got caught off guard, and he's like, husband? He's like, you're gay? He's like, you don't seem gay. And I was like, well, I can assure you, I am very gay. <laughs> and he's like, I've never really met a gay person before. Uh, he's like, this is catching me off guard. <laughs> I was just like, all right, uh, let's talk about it. And we talked, it was a great visit. He had signed up for a care plan and I was like, all right, good visit. But I was just being genuine and he was genuinely curious and he, I really appreciated it. And he, he, I think appreciated the conversation. I'm excited to work with him. I think it's going to be cool to see his transition of realizing that a gay chiropractor can help him live his best life. Right. Right. And the interesting thing is, you know, what, what is a gay person? <laughs> like, and that's fine. It's so cool because he was honest enough to say that, right? Like, right. Oh, I've never, I, I didn't know that. I didn't, you don't seem gay. Right. Okay, well, I'm, I'm well I actually gay. responded back. He's a, he, he was a, a black guy. I was like, well, you don't seem black. <laughs> and I was like, see how that feels? <laughs> no. It's great. It's great. And, and so the opportunity that I see is that it's such an opportunity to be vulnerable and and just to be real and to be able to ask the questions that you always wanted to ask you know and I, I i keep in my head i keep going back to this like whether it was a 50s 60s or as kids you know shh, don't 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 ask that or don't talk about that and really today's world is about please ask you know ask well the difference between the 50s and now is uh information gets passed in two seconds via social media right so before you could kind of not talk about things and it wouldn't spread now things are instantly out there. And so I think that's where the big shift has occurred. These generation millennials, I think now the next generation Z, they've been around communication instantly being delivered. Yeah. And so it's much easier for them to ask those questions. It's much easier for them to have those discussions. Yeah. Um, so I think that's also the shift is just technology. Technology has changed how quickly information can be spread and how things can be talked about. And everyone can record everything with their phones and, it just changes everything. Absolutely. It brings awareness. Absolutely. You know, but I, I would recommend that people, you know, reach out to people if, if they know they have any uncomfortableness, right? Yeah. You know, you know, I could have told you um, I'm not racist, right? I can say that, right? Oh, I grew up outside Detroit, you know, yada, and all this stuff, right? But, you know, the truth is, you know, if you ask a person, good, let me ask you a question. If you were in a... Uh, if you're in a, a bus station, you know, at midnight with 200 people and you're the only white person there or you're the only black person there, right? How would you feel? You know, and th when you pose certain questions, people can kind of go in. If they really want to go in and go, well, yeah, I don't know if I feel comfortable. Good. That's perfect. Let's talk about that, right? You know, yeah. What's there, right? If you're, or, or if you're at the gay pride festival, you know, and, and, and you're straight, you know? Um, let's talk about that because I had uncomfortable times, you know, in the, at the Gay Pride Festival, you know, checking people and doing things. It wasn't about checking gay people. We knew we knew we were there, but we right. had looks from certain people that were that were upset that we were touching their partners and and, and things like that. And I didn't know how to deal with it. I mean, I just right. didn't know how to deal with it, you know. And 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 there were other things I didn't know how to deal with. But I, you're able to ask the question. You become friends with people. Able to ask the question. And yep. they don't look at you like you got three eyes. They look at you like, wow, you really want to know about me. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's genuinely the best thing, the best piece of advice I can give to anyone that wants to learn more about diversity and inclusion is reach out to the people in your life that are diverse and talk to them. 
And if you're in a situation where there's no one in your life that is diverse, like that's a really good point to kind of reflect and be like, why is that the case? Why do I not have any minority groups in my, in, in my, in my friend circle? You know, um, birds of a feather flock together, right? If, if your inner circle are all people that are exactly like you, that's something to kind of look at and be like, okay, maybe I need to make some shifts and maybe I need to, to open up that circle slightly so that I can become a better version of myself. Yeah. Um, so that one as a person become, can become more inclusive and diverse and hopefully in their practice. Right. Because a lot of these minority groups, they need to care more than anyone else. Right. And they're, they're looking so hard to find a place that is safe for them. I mean, I have people driving from Oceanside to see me. And for those that don't know how far that is, that's about 45 minutes. I can only imagine how many chiropractors they pass. And they drive all the way there to see me. And I'm like, wow, like, I'm thankful they come see me. But then I also have this part of me that feels a bit sad. A bit sad that they can't find someone in their community to take care of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, you talk about you talk about opening our circle, and and when we talk about that in practice, or and it's not even about practice, but the more we open our circle, the more our practice opens, right? And the more yeah. our, the more our circle opens. And and I want to use it as a segue because I know you've been doing some pretty amazing things in your practice even over the last four or five months, right, during the COVID stuff, you know. So share with us what's been kind of transformed in your practice around that. Yeah, well, I'm sure like many practitioners out there, March hit, and then all of a sudden we had to figure out what to do with our practices. And I'm sure for most people, things dried up pretty quick. And a lot of my business has been built on networking and screenings and outreach and being involved in many in-person activities that are no longer occurring. So I use social media to build my practice during this, this time. And it was amazing because uh, speaking of diversity and inclusion, I also have my biases. I also have my ideal patients that I wanted in my practice. Well, since I could no longer do things in person, I had to start using social media to become that, that outlet. And all of a sudden I started having all this military come into my office, which I really didn't have before. Right. And I had to be adaptable. I had to be quick to change and quick to, to, to ch evolve my practice to serve who was open and willing to come in. And the military has been awesome. I had this bias of what military was going to be. And they have been gracious, kind. They show up for their appointments. Please, thank you. It has been transformative. And it was just because I had to be adaptable to survive. And, 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 and shockingly, I've been able to double my practice during this time, which... I kind of sit back and look at how was I able to do this during this unique time in our history. Um, but I've been having people coming in that have, been, have lost their jobs or unemployment, and they've been using their unemployment card to pay for their visits. And they say, you know what, Doc? I realize in this time I can be as healthy as I possibly can be. So even though I don't have a job, I'm going to pay for a care plan with this. And the first time that happened, I got really emotional because I was like, wow, I can't believe this person is actually using their unemployment to come in. And it kept happening over and over and over again and it just was amazing i just i had to adapt how i brought patients into the office i had to change my message i had to change how i talked to prospective patients and it worked amazingly but i had to be adaptable yeah yeah and you know there, there's an old saying uh, there's an old tape on and it's from a guy named um uh, herb hender he's an old car who was with bj in those days and it's the title of it is change thinking changes everything and you just change your thinking yeah you know and i love i love what you said and i hope our listeners saw that that you know that you have your biases and and conscious and unconscious right you right. know and and it's like beautiful opening up growing and as we grow as individuals our practice grows yeah our life grows, right everything around us grows. it's been amazing so i'm just this, this time of, of, for myself, of also, you know, speaking of diversity and inclusion and biases, changing those on my own, in my own circle has given me a huge bounty of amazing people that are just thriving and just connecting and these patients that we all know, when people see, get into chiropractic care, they start thriving. And so watching them go from that, we've all seen that patient that comes in with that glazed over look. And then after two or three visits, all of a sudden the light comes on. And just watching that happen during this time and giving someone that gift, man, that's just amazing. Like, it's just, it's so rewarding to come home 
It's and great. Like, wow, today was a really awesome day in practice, even though, you know, what we're having to do in our office is to kind of stay open, um, to be able to kind of get home and be like, wow, today was a really good day. I helped a lot of people. Yeah, and I adapted a lot. <laughs> and I adapted. Every day is, a, every day is an adapting. But, it's, <laughs> but, but the interesting thing, too, and we'll, we'll kind of end on this, is that, you know, you know and, and I appreciate, Angel, everything you said about diversity and inclusion. I'm, I'm, I'm just so thrilled that our listeners got to hear about that. And then also, you know, your practice, how, how it's just exploded during this time period, you know, because of shifts that happen with inside of you, obviously, because we all know it's above, down, inside, out, right? You can grow in practice. But in addition to that, you know, it's keeping the balance, right? Correct. Because as you're going through this and the times and everything else and doubling your practice, you know, what, what are some of the things you've done around that to make sure that you're staying, you're staying healthy? Yeah, I've had to find a lot of balance in my life during this time because uh, through this time, I, I lost my front office staff because children were being, you know, at home. So I was basically running the whole office as a one-man show. I was the receptionist. I was the chiropractor. I was the – it was kind of like when I started out all over again. It was very interesting. But um, but with that much work and energy and practice, I'd have to be able to come home and still be a husband and still be kind and still be caring and still be compassionate. So – I would come home and I would just disconnect. I would, this is the first thing I would get rid of. I would just be like, I don't want to be on the phone. I have barely kind of engaged in social media just because when I'm home, just because it's, it's draining. Like it's the, the, I'm finding that with all the work one does in practice, they also need to do an equal amount of work at home and in their personal life. And so for me, it's been really just a matter of focusing on myself, exercising, meditating, being with my loved ones, finding joy, laughing at just small things. I got into a hobby of plants and taking care of all these plants has been super nurturing and healing. And I feel it's crazy. I'm like this crazy plant guy, but I'm just absolutely loving taking care of these plants. And it's just been this active meditation that turns my brain off that I guess I'm just a, a nurturer healer. So working on the plants, kind of like working on a person. Um, and it's just been amazing to just kind of find that balance and being able to disconnect because disconnecting lets us recharge. Right. And, 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 and I think a big thing for me and speaking to that, disconnecting allows us to reconnect. Correct. Disconnecting from social media allows us to reconnect with the people around us, the plants around us, the, 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 the you know, the children around us, the, you know, everything else around us, the hobbies we love to do, you know, those kind of things. And I, I trust and I hope that people have used this time to do that, you know. Um, yes, I think definitely, you know, disconnecting from social media, from the news media, from, from any external force that's not within that circle of love for you. So finding that circle of love and just cherishing it in, in the off times is just, it's necessary. One's going to go crazy. That's so, so right. You are a circle of love, and I know you've got so much love in your heart, and, you, and the service I know that you provide, and I know where you come from, that, that it is really about acceptance, and it's about being with people. And I, I want to thank you. I just want to thank you for, for all you're doing, you know, for your community, for our, you know, our community. I still consider myself San Diego, you know, for our community in San Diego, for the uh, LBGTQ community at large in our profession, because I know you're really involved in that. I want to thank you for what you do for Life West and, uh, you know, and for all the chiropractors who can call you and say, hey, how do I do this and what do I do with this? Because I know you are a leader out there and, and doing that. So thank you. And, and you know, we can, never, we, can never, we can never, you know, minimize, you know, what we do because it means so much to people. So, so thank Absolutely. you so much. And any last words you'd like to share before we sign off? Yeah, I just want to talk about one of those things. So, um, I recently took on a preceptor student at my office, uh, like what? So a lot of students are struggling to get through clinic and their numbers and their hours, and we have an opportunity as practitioners to bring in students to um, teach them to be chiropractors. And I recently did that. It's been one of the most amazing experiences to be able to teach a, chiro a soon-to-be chiropractor what real practice is like. And so I just asked, practitioners out there to open their office, open their offices to these preceptor students and give them the opportunity to learn more practices and trust them. Uh, I was shocked at how confident of an adjuster or chiropractor this intern was. Just shocked. So hand off to Life West and their technique department because amazing. I was just like, wow. And, and, um, but I, just, I just asked that, you know, that 
that uh, docs out there be open to that. And, and this is a great opportunity to bring someone of diversity into your practice. Someone that's not a normal practitioner and you bring them in there. It's a great time to learn. Yeah, and, and I want our listeners to know that was unsolicited. <laughs> yes, we didn't even talk about that. But yeah. We didn't talk about that. That was unsolicited, but but thank you. And, and I do want to do that. I'm just going to snowball that for one quick second because we, we're, we're because of what's happening right now and, you know, uh, colleges are online and all these other things that are going on that we are moving our students out to offices like yours and our, our viewers' offices, right, so that they can get the credits that they need so they can graduate as part of what we're doing. They have, they have to fulfill the requirements here as far as competencies with CCE and certain things they have to do, but the visits we can also do outside. So um, so please, if that if that's in there for any of you, we'll put, I'll have Shane put something, our producer put something down below that you can reach out to a uh, link and, and just say that you're interested in being a preceptor. It's really easy and, and it is really rewarding, you know. And so thank you, Angel, for doing that because it is it is rewarding. And people might go, oh, well, I'm not busy enough. My practice is a little bit. It doesn't matter. They're, they're going to get an experience and you get a chance that you can teach them more. But, you know, if you're if you're super busy, they'll learn watching you, but now you can actually, they can watch you and they can listen to you, right? You can talk to them too. So. Well, and you get this excited energy of someone in your office that's just thrilled to be there and be out in practice. You know, it's it, 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 it increases that frequency in the office just to uh, another level. So uh, for me, it's been awesome. I'm I'm really forward looking forward to continuing doing that. Good, uh, and I'm, we're, we're excited for that. And everyone else out there, please know that it's available for you too. I think you have to be in practice I don't know, four or five years, something like that. Um, but we can, uh, my our team here can share with you what that is. But if it's in your heart. Think about that. It's awesome. Um, thank you, Angel. I want to thank you for being on our show today. Um, I want to thank our our viewers. For listening in, uh, I hope that you got some, you know, something touched your heart today or touched your mind, and and you took a few nuggets away that something you could do for your life to enrich yourself, to grow yourself, to enlarge yourself, your heart, your mind, your practice, everything else around it. And just know that we love you from LifeWest. Um, uh, we appreciate all you're doing for the profession, all you're doing for the community to create a brighter future for humanity, and that we we will keep coming back, you know, week after week with our leadership line. So. Thank you, and I want to thank Dr. Angel again, and we will be back with you uh, next week. So until then, be safe and make sure that you love the people that are with you.